Tech Rabbit here. Just thought we'd have a little look at um, breadboard resistors. So anyway, let's take a little tour into what a resistor is and how it can be used first. So anyway, here we have a um, resistor and it's usually a part of a circuit that's marked either with this symbol or this symbol. And it has a resistance value in ohms. And that's what the ohm character looks like. So, and here's the main formula used around resistors, it's called the Ohm's Law. So voltage is equal to current times resistance. And if you want to add to, uh, if you connect two resistors in um, series, then you want to get the total value of the resistance, then you add the two values together, quite simple. If they're in parallel, however, then you have a little bit more complicated formula, so I won't give you how we get how one gets this formula, but you can see it up there. So it's R1 times R2 divided by R1 plus R2. And then a, few, a little bit of rules about um, uh, circuits and currents. So basically the first basic rule is the current does not disappear. So if you have um, the main current flowing into the circuit from the power supply going through the different parts then you actually end up with a current that is the same when it returns into the power supply. And then um, yeah, and on the other hand voltages they should disappear so the poten potential fed by a power supply should dissipate in the um, enclosed circuit and if it turns out that you don't get that value then you somehow don't understand where it's um, dissipating the voltage. And then I thought I'd cover also this subject a little bit more advanced, but it's actually a, a, a way to calculate a alternative um, circuit, simpler circuit for a voltage divider built out of um, resistors. And we'll have a little bit of a look at this in, in practice also. And then the last main formula, of, which is kind of useful, is the um, power. So power is equal to current times voltage. And this is very useful if you want to quick check that you're not going to be feeding too. Um, I'm burning too much power in the resistor to actually hurt it. So anyway, let's have a little bit of a look at some practical circuits. Look here, there's um, actually several sizes of resistors. So here's one that's very big, can um, take quite a lot of power around 50 watts but uh, not probably not the most suitable thing to use on a breadboard and then one has really really small resistors and that's actually the uh, resistors like in there Can't even, that's one of them <laughs> so they're surface mount resistors so and um, also not very practical if they're not mounted on something else to be used on breadboard. So usually what one uses is one uses these types of resistors, which is like a quarter of a watt. Um, and they can come in um, uh, different accuracy ratings, so like 1%, 10%, and so forth. And then they have these leads so that you can actually... Um, uh, easily place them on into the breadboard and they're usually also connected up um, in these kind of strips so you can actually cut out individual um, resistors and then uh, sometimes the manufacturers actually mark the size of the resistor so it's easier to identify and of course you can also use um, so-called variable resistors. So this is called a potentiometer, which you can also, using these legs, you can um, actually install it quite easily on onto the breadboard. What I usually suggest that people should do is they should um, buy a set of resistors. Focus. So this is one of them. So this is a set of 2,600 uh, resistors. And 
And the good thing with this package and many others that exist is that it actually does have the um, color coding um, logic um, printed on the back of the package. So as you see here, you can see the color coding on the resistor. And then you just read the different lines and then it will tell you like and then you can identify the, what is the um, resi specific resistance values. So, let's have a look at what, how to use them on the breadboard then. So, anyway, we have a 220 ohm resistor here. And let's pretend we actually don't know what its, what its actual value is. So what we can do is we can take a, in this case, a digital ohm meter. And set it to ohms. And then we have the two leads. And then we can just put on both sides, doesn't matter which ones. And then one can wait for the region to calibrate, and then one can see the actual um, resistance. So, um, as you see, the, the, the resistance that you get is not exactly 220 ohms because it has the 1% um, tolerance so 1% is like uh, that will be 2 or 3 ohms which it can be off, I would say around yeah, depending if you have quality resistor if it's 220 ohms then 1% um, of that is 2.2 .2 ohms so yeah it's uh, kind of, kind of there. Ah, it's a bit on the limit. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, actually, that's an important thing to note that resistors is not an exact science. And um, then we have also a, um, a one kilo. And this is a very the thing when you're dealing with the resistors, they talk about um, kilo ohms and mega ohms, and that's the number of zeros after the number. So if it's kilo, then it's three zeros, and if it's mega, then it's six. So we could say also that this is 1,000 ohms. So uh, let's put that in the breadboard also. Like that. And I can also measure that. Let's see what we got. I'll let it calibrate. Oh, quite close. And then, of course, one can uh, one can measure the total resistance. So, as regarding the formula for four resistors in series. And I could get the uh, total resistance, which is not, um, if it was 1000 ohms and 220, then it's not really exactly that value. And this is actually a good demonstration, so, you know, as I said, resistors aren't exact, so, you know, one shouldn't calculate with too many decimals when one's dealing with the resistors and have to take that into account when one's designing circuits. And, and, um, measuring them that um, just because it says 220 ohms or 1000 ohms then when you start combining resistors then the error can propagate so this could be more and this could be less so, yeah. so that's that and then of course one can um, connect them in parallel like that. And we can measure again. Like that. And now let's see what we get. So oh, it's a, oh, 178 ohms. And um, this is the thing when you look at the formula and then you just think of it logically that, that um, basically if you want to like a a simple rule: if the one of the resistors in parallel is is um, much much more smaller than the um, 
the other one, then it will be the smaller one that will be predominant. So the resistance will always be under the value of the smallest resistance. And, and that's a good sort of hand rule to have. So, current does not disappear, example. So, set up the same circuit here and do a little bit different resistors. And then one sees that this one is one branch of the resistors is taking 0 0.6 milliamps, and the other branch is like 3 milliamps. And then one can see here's the total current, and as you see. As the scaling is not that good because this goes up to 100 milliamps, you can very, very hard to read, but it's maybe like 3.6. I suggest we change this out for the digital meter and read it again. So, uh, connected in the digital meter, gives a little bit of reading. So, 3.68 milliamps. So that's what's coming from the power supply and then goes into those two sub-circuits with the resi two resistors and then comes back to the power supply. So that's tracking down the currents. So for the next stage, let's have a look at um, this one here. Voltage should disappear. So let's put the power on. Yeah. And then we see the main supply voltage is 5 volts. And then we have two analog meters here. One showing like 0 0.8 volts for the lower section of the resistor divider. And the other one showing uh, approximately a half a volt less than 5 volts. So, that's 5 volts. And then you see that the 5 volts comes into the circuit and it gets dissipated over the sections of the circuit and then and it's all gone. So, now we're going to have a look at this. The output impedance um, alternative circuit. And um, to reduce the time, I've already, already um, focused. But anyway, I've done the basic calculation. So, you know, we basically got 220 ohm resistors to the, as the voltage divided. The input voltage is 5 volts, and then I calculated the equivalent. Um, voltage and uh, resistance for the uh, output impedance. And then we're going to test this with a load and that's going to be a 1 kilo ohm resistor and a 220 ohm resistor. So what we're going to do is we're going to first take the 1 kilo ohm That's a load on our voltage divider. Measure voltage. <laughs> yeah, that's my fault. I put the range on. Um, I had it on millivolts, not volts. Right, right. Continue. So and now we get 2.244. We'll register that.
equivalent circuit and see if we get the same results with the same loads. So anyway making some progress I did um, miscalculate the, um, <laughs> the re resistance somehow so you know doesn't seem like I can add two sums together for it. But anyway, it's fixed now. So the input voltage is now corrected to 2.5 volts, and then the resistance should be 108.9. But this is actually this. Um, I built it with separate resistors, and I'm trying to adjust as best I can. I can get to like, I think I hit 100. And it was done. 109, 110, that I go up to while trying to adjust the resistance. Should actually measure that. Uh -huh. Just a sec, we can actually do that. I got to the objective was was 108.9. So that's not that bad. Of course, this thing's the resistors; they react to temperature and stuff, so it's not they're not totally temperature stabilized. So there's some inaccuracy there. supply wires pulling pulling the breadboard and putting the multimeter on top of the <laughs> power supply cable so that it get pulled away. Anyway so um, that, the, the equivalent uh, or the um, uh, output resistance is set and then the voltage is set 2.5 First load. Yeah. So, what did we get? One point seven, and it's one point six six. So that's approximately one point seven. So I think that's kind of acceptable. And then we um, switch to the other load. And that was the 220 ohm resistor, so now we're going to put in 1000 ohm resistor, or 1 kilo. Two. So there it overshoots a bit because it's supposed to be 2.24. Well, I think since I didn't get the resistor exactly the same, then I think that's not that terribly bad. It's like 0 0.1 volts. Wrong. Not exactly that much either. 0 0.07.
vault. <laughs> that's not that much of a difference. So anyway, that's how we make an equivalent circuit for the um, output imp impedance. And, um, so it makes it a little bit easier to calculate when you only have... You can approximate things much faster if you only have an equivalent circuit. You have like a, a theoretical um, power source and then uh, one impedance to deal with when you're trying to calculate the effect of external loads on, the, uh, on your own circuit. Oh, and the last um, item on the list is a little bit about the um, power. So, why is power important? Because, um, the um, 0 0.25 watts is not that much. Yeah, <laughs> it's changing color. <laughs> yeah, that's a goner. Now it's burning up. So that's 70 milliamps, 14 volts. Ah, oh, quite a tough resistor. I wouldn't have, ah, now you can smell it, or I can smell it. Ah, it's getting black. I don't know if it shows so much on the film, but so that's um, 70 milliamps, 14 volts. And it's starting to discolor quite badly. Oh, I am amazed. It's holding out very well. It's still, it's still not the. Um, it doesn't seem the resistance has changed because it's still um, 74 milliamps. But it certainly changed color. That's for sure. It's toast. I wouldn't use that resistor again. <laughs> ah, let's call it a day. I was uh, waiting that we could burn up a resistor, but I can't get over 15 volts, so it'll probably just get more and more dark. So anyway, just remember the power, you know, the, 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 that you don't exceed the, um, the power li limit of the resistor in the use you have it in. Because then it will actually last long. You shouldn't actually bring it closer to the, close to the power limit either, because um, then you risk the accuracy of the resistance. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. Um, if you um, want to see more content, please subscribe, hit the bell icon to be notified, and um, you know, pass the word around to others who uh, may be interested in electronics. And um, I'll see you in the next one.